think it's a bit, bit of both really. Depends on how the club progresses and how the players progressing themselves as well. Um, you got to find find the club that you know you you can settle into and plays the right football for yourself. Um, you'll find that you know different sort of managers will you know be sort of better for your sort of style of play. So you know nowadays it's not the norm to stay around and play three four hundred games for a club. Um, but I think depending on sort of how you progress as a player and how how comfortable you are at the club, then I think you know. You, you judge it by how, how well you're playing at the time. I don't get many. Um, probably there was one for Burgess Hill in the FA Trophy, Leverhead at home, half folly, outside the box. Probably probably the best one I've connected with and then probably Worthing fans won't like me saying this, but there was one for Bognor um, a couple of seasons ago and you know, uh, I think it was a league game Sudbury away. A similar, similar goal really, another rough volley on the edge of the box, but again, I don't get many, so it can't be many for choose from. <laughs> what for? Com comedy value or player wise? Um, player wise, I'd say just for commitment and um, a you know, great attitude is someone like Pat Harding. I played with him for. Um, a good few years at Eastbourne Borough um, and then we both went our separate ways and then we met up again at Burgess Hill um, for you know player application and the way he sort of look after, looks after himself and you know he's just done I think it's 350 appearances he's just made for Burgess Hill so shows you how well he looks after himself he's a year older than me um, so he you know he he's a good sort of role model for any sort of young player looking to have a long career in the game comedy value though know, You've got to be the fat barbers, Joe and Andy um, at Burgess Hill. They were an absolute nightmare. Coming in with all sorts, you know, food, stuff, catching them before games. But they'd still, to be fair to them, they'd still, they'd still, they'd still pull out the performances. But, you know, chocolate bars dropping out their pockets as they're running, you know, that sort of stuff. So, but now, uh, yeah. Well, luck luckily enough, um, I've never had to be in that position where I've had to choose. Um, I've always tried to balance it out as much as I can. Uh, early part of the career, try and not work as much as I could, you know, try and make it back into the full-time game. Obviously that didn't happen for me, so around about sort of 24, 25, that's when I had to really sort of realise that, you know, chances were slim, so I'd have to, you know, hit the real world and start start getting a full-time job and starting to look after myself properly. But, um, yeah, so, I, you know, I've got a removals company at the moment, Moving Buddies, if anyone's moving over Christmas. Um, but yeah, that, it, it's, that's hard, you know, you go and move someone's house and then you have a midweek game and then you have to get up in the morning and, you know, move move someone else's house, you know. So it's, you know, it's hard, but you, you get yourself used to it. You have to look after yourself right and eat the right foods and stretch, stretch a lot more now. Coming to my age, it's, it's, it's a vital thing that I keep my body sort of as uh, supple as I can, just so I can, you know, play as many games as I can. Well, basically, yeah, so we're on, just on holiday, family holiday, and uh, just at the new camp, going to watch Barcelona, Iniesta's last game, and you bump into like a Worthing fan just, just before, and it's, yeah, so we, we just bumped heads and, you know, had a, had a drink, had a picture together, and uh, yeah, it was, it was quite surreal actually, all them people. Um, early days, probably not a lot of people will know their names now, but um, Paul Kennett, um, he was at Lewis when I was at Bogner and Eastbourne Borough. Um, he, he, he used to kick me all over the place, but you know, it was a good learning curve for me. It made me, made me uh, realise I shouldn't go near them players. Uh, and then, obviously, play, pl played with and against was Paul Armstrong. Um, he's retired now, but uh, he was a great player. He could do everything well, literally. Throw, uh, throw ins, he had a long throw, he could tackle, he could find that pass, he could score goals. He was just probably one of the best all rounded players I've kind of come up against and probably played with.
I haven't had too many turning points really, I don't think. I just think it's been sort of like a, it's been a long roller coaster ride, but you know, I early age, I broke my leg um, twice within sort of an, a year and a half. And that was quite a big sort of, you know, battle to come up against uh, when I got through that and then, you know, was managing to come out and, you know, play and, you know, get on with sort of life then that, that that was a big turning point to realise that I could, you know, still have a career in the game and stuff and it and touch wood sort of it's you know, it's turned out okay and I've managed to make, you know, a good career for myself. But um yeah, not 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 many too not too many highs in the non league game, you don't realise sometimes, you know, I've played fifteen seasons and probably five of them have been, you know, where we've been battling for titles and the other ten, you you know, sometimes it's a it's a battle to stay up or it's just a mediocre mid mid table season. So, you know, you've got to kind of grab them opportunities when they can, when you're doing well and you're in a team that's doing well, enjoy every moment because you, there's there's not many of them. To be fair, Totally different sides, really. Um, the squad, when I was at Burgess Hill, we were all kind of in our late 20s and um, we'd all been around a little bit. Um, so you had a lot more consistency within the side, sort of player-wise, um, turning up every week, you know, more of the seven out of tens, eight out of tens. It's the year we won that le the, the league and, you know, we, we had a real good sort of squad there. Um, this side completely different. It's young. It's it's quick. It's fast. Um, the players are sort. Of, you've got so many unpredictable players, like obviously David and your uh, your Reeses and stuff like that. So they're players that can you know turn a game on its head within you know within a second. So it's, they're complete. They're completely different sides, really. But this t the team where we've got now, they've got the potential to you know do really well this year. But they've got to realise that they've got to work hard and sort of do the right things at the right times. Um, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we, uh, we do that and, you know, progress and have a good season. So, I'd say, again, different, different sort of feelings. Obviously, both, both been promoted, but um, Burgess Hill, I was, I played literally every game and, you know, and felt 100% part of it. I know that sounds stupid, but at Bognor, I did feel 100% part of it, but my playing sort of uh, minutes were reduced a lot more. So it's it's a weird one because you, you know, you go through the whole season not playing as much, but I think where I was a little bit older, I could handle that a little bit more because, you know, there's some great players there, Dougie Tuck, Dan Beck, um, and, you know they're, they're they're great players in their position so you know you you have to wait for your chance play when when you're needed and i think that's where jamie sort of probably enjoyed having me there because i could you know with my age and stuff i could put a performance in without playing maybe two two three games to get me in the groove um so you know both like i said before um promotion doesn't come around that often so especially in a non-league game so when that final whistle goes and you end, you know you're going up. It's the best feeling. It's the best feeling because you you work all you work so hard during the season. You know Tuesday nights, Thursday nights, rain's coming down. You you know you, you've been to work all day. You haven't been home. You haven't had dinner. You you do that all year and then to get that sort of big party at the end and everyone sort of celebrating. Then that's it's it's it's, it's just a great feeling. Breaking my leg, you know, I, uh, I got, I broke that when I was what 17. Um, was out for sort of six months, and then, and then came back for pre-season. And uh, my my good mate Adam Alab uh, tackled me on the plate, and it fractured my bone again. Within sort of two weeks of coming back to full fitness, and then I was out for another six months. So that's probably the worst, but um, which which was pretty grim but you get you get over it um but and be, best moment would be uh getting promoted with Eastbourne Borough the conference south uh playoff final um 
which was uh, which was a great game, and I think I think we it was two one, and uh, yeah, the celebrations afterwards, like I said before, amazing. Yeah, and they're the things you wanna you wanna achieve in football, getting promoted and winning leagues. So. To be fair, there's <laughs> there's there's too many to choose from. Really, I wouldn't want to pick any one any any single player out. You know, they're all so young, and they've they've all got ambitions. You can see they all got ambitions to to want to get better, to want to learn it, um, and and progress. So, as you've seen in the last couple of seasons with non-league players from other sides getting getting trials and you know moving to professional clubs, it's it's it happens more often now than it did back when I was when I was their age so I think you know it's, it's a good pathway now because there's so much more exposures you know with your instant replay doing all the games and you know filming everything it's it's brilliant you know we use that system every every week at Worthing and it makes it so so beneficial for the young players to see where they're going right and where they're going wrong. And, you know, we didn't have that when we were younger. So they can learn from that. They can take the good bits out, you know, impl implement them into the in, into the games on the Saturday. And, you know, a lot of the players, you know, we've got six, seven players, in my opinion, that could easily play full-time football. Um, so it's, it's, it's one of them. If, they can put on a good show each Saturday and you know really apply themselves. So, you know, there's 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 more than a handful that could easily get get um, back to full time training. Um, Aaron Racine, because he eats so much. I don't know how he gets away with it. It must all go to his head because he, that's 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 pretty big. But. Um, but no, yeah, he, literally, he uh, he's in the gym twenty four seven. I think the gym where he goes, he's got he's got dogs, he's got every, he's got everything there. He's literally, it's like he's just on a you know on a on a vacation, like sort of twenty four seven. But um, but no, yeah, he's a. Uh, I'd I'd like to be him just to get away with eating so much in a day. Um, so really, I'd just say attitude, really. Um, it's you know it's a long career, or it can be a short career. So you know you just got to apply yourselves right, um, and you know treat every game as your last. Really, um, I see a lot of young players at the moment getting down now and then about bad performances and stuff. And um, you know you try you try and pick them up and you just you know try and get them on the right track really and keep them positive. But um, yeah, because that's that's the way it is. Look, I don't want to. I don't want to go too much into that because you know I don't want Alex, you know, waking up at Christmas and being disappointed, and you know not seeing anything under the tree for him. So I'll keep that to myself. <laughs>